Hey, what's up, Sue? I owe you this. This is a poem. I've been working on it, and I just finished it this morning. Um, in bits and pieces, it's been coming to me. Sometimes it comes all in one shot, sometimes not. But uh, it's fitting that I'm wearing a Disney shirt, because Disney's one of the largest corporations in the world. They're definitely in the top 2%, top 1, top 0.5, whatever. So uh, let's rock this one out. It's called Liquid. Margins have always been better for profit than for the people that live there. Where lower class looks like an accomplishment from down here. Where the ups and downs of the Joneses feel more like the down and outs of the Jeffersons. No black laundromat to wash the slavery off legal tender. No dirty employers blaming second generation dreamers for their money not being clean. Our very survival is a roller coaster with highs and lows that make the fluctuations in the market look about as eventful as a puddle of blood. We may not make the business segment of the nightly news, but if you study the income gap graph intently enough, as it crawls like comatose across the heart rate monitor of your TV screen, look closely in between and you can read police line, do not cross. On this block of Wall Street where people were auctioned alive for profit, there's a crime scene with chalk the same color as their school bus. Children disembark to labor and outline the shape of a ship. We're victims here. Slavery is not dead. The first wave of economics bought us across the middle classage, spreading the doctrine of self-consumption like a crusade, making savages of saints, surplus of security, substance. America offshoring our sweatshop dream to countries who are no more likely to buy our exports than our bullshit. We know it's all bull and bear these markets like the corporate class has it farmed free labor into the DNA of our country by the corpse load. So now we're dying for growth in an economic system that suffocates us with success because competition knows best and we won't be happy till there's no one else left. Our math is all wrong. Numbers without the lives attached to them can't be counted on fingers and toes. A pregnancy of complications deny her bedside prenatal because our health care is attached to our paychecks and not our home of the brave. Brave enough to tell our elders to pull the plug, to tell the young to shut the fuck up because you ain't old enough to use four letter words like inflation and way too young to contribute to the GDP, and that's a goddamn problem. America has an I don't care economy where we're either under the table or under the bus, sometimes even under the water. They're going to get the wall they always wanted when bodies start filling the Rio Grande up, 12,000 stories high, taller than the banks in Manhattan, sitting on 1.7 trillion of liquid while a country burns around them, golden parachutes in case we make it to the corner office. Unlikely, but not unheard of. Even London is burning right now. But the rich would jump. Take this entire slave shit, the whole corporation caboodle down with them, and they are rewarded handsomely for taking that risk. The corporation and bankruptcy are their safety nets. Their East Indian Tea Party drown us in the bathwater because dependents are expensive, a liability. So we stay at the margins. Ant farm after ant farm, we cultivate the industrial average. Our standard is poor. We are the property of our employers, held hostage by a safety net. We romanticize, but does not exist. And we won't rock the boat. Even when they can us in the bottom like bluefin tuna. Even when our children starve to death, to death next to us in a pile of their own feces. Even when it's always dark and someone is always screaming. We are pushed to the edge. They didn't jump when we could have. Miss the boat like we'd actually miss this boat. Rode this ship to America, convincing ourselves that one day it'll be a yacht. Make us believe we can't swim out here where the water is free.